Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Pen Habit. My name's Matt Armstrong, and I am glad to have you back here for another pen review. Now, in today's review video, we're going to be taking a look at another pen from the Edison Pen Company. Now, I've reviewed a couple of their pens in the past, including uh, the Collier, which is a pen that I liked quite a bit. I have it in the steel blue acrylic. Um, today's pen is the Edison Menlo. Now, the Collier and the other pens from Edison Pen Company that I have reviewed in the past are part of their production line of pens. They come in a few specific colors. They're available through a lot of other retailers in those specific colors, and they're kind of available forever. Uh, you know, they occasionally retire a model from those lines or a material occasionally runs out, but for the most part, you can get those pens wherever. But a big part of Edison's business is making custom pens um, for people, and they have a series of models that they use for their custom pen manufacturing uh, that they call their signature line. And the Menlo is one of their signature line pens. Now, I found this pen at the Edison Pen Company table at the DC show in 2015. Um, I'd been look, looking at getting a Menlo for a while, and there's a couple reasons why. I'll go through those a bit. But um, if you've never seen the Edison Pen Company table at a show or seen the photos that they put out, it's like walking into a rainbow factory. It's, they've got every color of the rainbow in tray upon tray upon tray of pens laid out. So it's, it's a little overwhelming at first because they've got hundreds and hundreds of different acrylics that you can have this pen made from. So usually the way it works is you contact them, say, I want this model, look through the, the, the materials library, ask for it in a particular material. At the shows, they bring a bunch of pre-made models, signature models with them. And one of the models that they brought with them is this Menlo. Now, the Menlo is a beautiful pen. It's a, a nice, long, kind of cigar-shaped pen that's a little fatter at the top than it is down at the bottom. Um, I'm not going over the packaging on this, mainly because the packaging is like the packaging of every other Edison pen. It's nothing particularly special. It's just a, a clamshell case with a couple of documents. So, if you're really, really seriously interested in the packaging for the Edison pen, go check out one of my other videos. But packaging for this is nothing too terribly special. Um, this is made out of a material they call electric blue swirl acrylic. And you can kind of see it is semi-transparent, semi-translucent, uh, really swirly material. It's kind of a blue-purple with these very pale electric blue um, swirls that go all the way throughout pen tapers down, and it's almost a point, but not quite a point. It's kind of a slightly pointed, rounded off edge. Uh, really attractive profile. It's nothing too wild or crazy. It's not a terribly innovative design, but it's really, really nice and really classic. And that, you know, I've, I've said this several times before, but I feel like a lot of Edison's designs are very classic designs, and then you get to have a lot of fun with the materials. And this is one where the design of the pen, especially right up front, doesn't seem, you know, it, it's not avant-garde or anything like that. It's a very classic design, but you pair it with a very unusual, bright, flashy material, and it kind of takes on a life of its own. So the clip is a nice, uh, it's a folded metal clip, so you can kind of see back here. Um, it's pretty springy, almost to the point of being a little on the flimsy side, but I do like it. I like the very streamlined kind of modern look. It, I, I'm not a big fan of those kind of triangular clips with the little ball on the end, and I see those a lot. This is not one of those, so I, I like the profile of this clip quite a bit. Then you've got that one silver cap band toward the bottom here. The pen tapers down a little bit more. There's a blind cap here for the filling system, which I will get to in just a little bit. And then the barrel says Edison Pen Company Menlo. Um, really quite an attractive uh, profile. So let's talk a little bit about the filling system. The Menlo comes with what is known as what Edison calls the pump filler system. Uh, this is the same filling system that is used in the Parker Vacuumatics, the old vintage Parker Vacuumatics. Uh, it's a pump filler system, and I'll talk you through the, the functionality of it a little bit. But the pen comes with this blind cap. You remove it, and there is this uh, button here that you can press. And inside, you press the button down, and inside it presses this little latex sack down and then releases when you release the pen. 
sucks up some ink. So you're basically expelling air, sucking up ink, expelling air, and you repeat this four or five times to fill up the, sec the, the ink reservoir inside the pen. And according to the Edison website, this will hold about 1.7 milliliters, so about the same amount as just a little bit more than three international standard converters. Uh, nice, nice, good ink capacity here. Um, it's, it's a fun filling system, and I like unusual filling systems. This isn't necessarily an unusual system, but it, it, it's one that you don't find on a lot of modern pens because uh, it, it can be a little fiddly to deal with. Um, but Brian went through the effort of, Brian Gray from Edison Pen Company, went through the effort of, of re, re-envisioning this, the Parker Vacuumatic system for the pump filler system that they use now. Um, some of the benefits, much larger ink capacity, um, it can be really cool with this semi-translucent material. You can actually uh, get to see the ink sloshing around inside. Some of the downsides are it can be a real pain in the rear end to clean. Um, and the latex sac does need, you know, may need to be replaced every now and again, especially if the pen gets neglected for a long period of time. One of the smart things that they did when they redesigned this pump filler system was they redesigned it with the exact same sized parts that exist in Parker Vacuumatics. So you can, you can replace these, you know, if, if for some reason, heaven forbid, um, you know, something ever to happen to Edison Pen Company it were to go out of business, you can replace the pump filler system on this pen with the materials from a Parker Vacuumatic, which there are a lot of people are big fans of them. Um, he also did something about cleaning them, and I'll get to that when I when after we talk about the nib a little bit. So, um, the let me the pen the cap comes off. It's just one and a quarter turns to remove the cap, which is pretty standard. And then you've got uh, kind of a nice tapered section with a little flared lip here in the same material, and you've got some threads here, just a tiny tiny bit on the sharp side, but really not bad at all. Um, one of the nice things about the design on this pen is they made the section removable. In vintage Parker's, Parker Vacuumatics, a lot of times the section would, uh, it would screw on, but then they'd shellac it in place because the threads weren't tight enough that it could prevent ink from coming out. Fortunately, these uh, are machined on a CNC lathe and the threads are very tight and very, very smooth. So a little bit of silicone grease around the threads and you can just screw the, you know, screw the section on and it will keep the ink in place. So it's kind of like if this were an eyedropper and a filler, you know, and a pump filler at the same time, which I think is brilliant because cleaning these out without, you know, if you want to clean it out without taking the section off, you have to very, very, very slowly squeeze the button to push the ink out instead of pushing the air out and then repeat that several times and then fill it with water. It, it can take forever. I've even heard of people online, you know, basically taking a salad spinner and a piece of PVC pipe and wrapping it in, in fabric and then sliding the pen in and running it through the salad spinner to use centrifugal force to expel all the excess ink. Then they fill it with water and repeat that several times. That's just a pain. So I really, and, and I know, because I have a vintage Parker Vacuumatic, and it's a pain to clean out. Uh, so I think that's a really wise move on the part of the Edison Pen Company. Uh, the nib unit on this is a standard Yovo number no. 6 size nib. Um, I got a fine nib on this. The Edison Pen Company also offers 18 karat gold nibs, if you want them, for an extra fee. And um, you can even get 14 karat gold nibs that have been uh, customized by Richard Binder for additional flex. Um, sometimes those aren't available, sometimes they are, but those are extra as well. I got this on the very last day of the DC show. This was my last purchase. I did not have enough money to get it with a gold nib, so I got it with a steel nib, and Edison steel nibs are usually pretty good. Now, I will say that these Yovo steel nibs, a lot of companies use them. And they're good nibs. They write really well. Um, they're often very smooth uh, with good, uh, well-adjusted ink flow. I've got no complaints. But no complaints being said, uh, I do find most of them, the steel versions of these nibs, to be a little on the pedestrian side. 
Um, they don't have a lot of personality to the nib. That's not to say that there's anything wrong with that. And, I, and for most people, I'd say a nib without personality, at least personality as I define it, is, is absolutely exactly what you want. Fortunately, when you buy a custom pen from Edison Pen Company, Brian will adjust your nib to your personal taste. So you can get a little more personality out of it uh, if you want. If I had to do this over again, I would probably get the 18 karat gold nib, but that's because my writing style, my kind of have kind of a swoopy cursive writing style, really benefits from the bounce of a slightly softer nib. Um, Whereas this is, a, it's a very rigid nib. There's no flex to be had in this nib because it's a, you know, it's a standard steel nib, which is fine for most people. One of the other things I don't particularly care for about these number six standard Yovo nibs is that oftentimes I feel like the design of the pen, the nib is just slapped on at the end. There's no, there's no thought about how the nib is designed into the flow of the pen and the overall aesthetic of the pen. And I will tell you right off the bat, I think this is probably the most attractive design of any pen in the Edison library. Um, I think they have done a, an absolutely wonderful job of making this nib feel as though it was designed to go on this pen. There is just a line and a flow, an energetic flow about the pen. I'm going to get a little new agey here, um, but that's because I... I connect with this pen in a way that I don't with a lot of others. Um, and I'm having a hard time describing why I do. So, uh, you know, forgive me if I get a little bit new agey. I, among other things, studied dance in college. My undergraduate degrees in musical theater. And one of the things they teach you in dance class, and I've, I've talked about this on other videos before, is that when you dance, you want to have the energy coming out all the way down your arm, you stay in frame here, and out the fingers. So you want it to feel like, instead of going like this, which is not a good look, you, you want the energy to come out your arm and through your fingers. So when you're you know, holding your arms like this, it, there, there's energy. That's, it, it sounds a little silly, but that's the way I feel about this pen. I feel like of all of their designs, this one just flows. It goes from one end to the other. There's very little in the way of break. It feels as though the energy just kind of flows from the tip of the pen down through the nib and out onto the paper. And this nib feels like an integrated part of the whole. So yes, it's a, it's a steel nib. It's not particularly exciting or anything like that, but it just fits with this pen. This is a stellar writer for long writing sessions. In the hand, I find this to be, a, the balance isn't quite right for me, and I can't figure out why. It's long enough, the grip is wide enough, and that's not the problem. But when I post this pen, that's when I feel like it just starts to sing. Um, and I don't post a lot of my pens, but this is one I post every single time I write with it. And again, you get that line that just goes all the way from the tip of the pen, you know, from the tip of the cap, all the way down the pen, through the tip of the nib to the paper. And it it's almost like I'm conducting with the pen when I write. It's, it's, it's really interesting in the hand for me, and I like writing with this pen an awful lot. Uh, I actually re-inaugurated doing the handwritten version of my typed reviews on, on penhabit.com. I write it out by hand first, which I didn't used to do, and then I started for a while, and then I stopped because I got really far behind, and I re- I enjoyed writing with this pen so much that I wanted to write the review by hand first um, because I just enjoy the process with this pen so much. So let's go through some comparisons here. This is the Edison Menlo. Now we'll look at some uh, lesser expensive pens that are similar. You know, here's the Jinhao X450. Uh, the let's slide this down a little bit. The Lamy All Star, which will be the same size as the Safari or the Vista. We've got the Pilot Metropolitan. And then some of the larger pens that you might be familiar with here is the Pelican M800 or the Pelican M1000 and then the Mont Blanc 149. So you can see it's about the same size as the 149, just a touch small, uh, shorter but a narrower in size. So if you're one of those people who finds the 149 to be too, oh, come back here, uh, to be too girthy, 
the Menlo is probably one that you will like quite a bit. Uh, okay, so measurements. You are looking at 146 millimeters from point to point. Take the cap off, and it is a very reasonable 129. It's very light, um, I think, which is one of the reasons why the balance is a bit weird for me. If you've got shorter hands, I suspect the balance uncapped would be a little bit better for you. Uh, and then, it, as I mentioned, it can be posted, and it is 162 millimeters when posted. The grip is 11 millimeters right in the middle of the section here. You've got 13.2 at the widest point of the barrel, and the widest point of the cap, you're looking at 14.6 millimeters. So pretty slender all the way around. And then, as I mentioned, it's pretty light, but it's not quite as light as you might expect. It's 16 grams uncapped and 22 grams capped or posted. So if you like a little bit more heft to the pen, go ahead and cap the pen. And if you've got larger hands, I, I don't think you'll have any problems with the balance. It's still quite nicely balanced when posted. Okay, so let me go ahead and do a little bit of a writing sample, show you how this all goes down. This is the Edison Menlo in electric blue swirl acrylic. <laughs> I, can't, I can't talk and write at the same time. I R L S. There we go. Boy, that was bad. All right, we have a steel nib. And this one is a fine, which is not normally what I go after, but uh, I wanted to have a couple more fines in my collection. The ink for this review is Kujaku. And that's by Pilot Iroshizuku. And we are on a Rhodia dot pad. Okay, so here is your quote. Okay, um, not a hard start or skip at all on any of the pens. It doesn't require any pressure really to write, which is exactly the way you want it. Um, I find that Edison's nibs are generally uh, a little feedbacky, but not bad. Always very smooth, but with just a touch of feedback and a little on the dry side of moderate for my personal tastes. Um, now, I haven't adjusted this nib at all since I got it from the DC show. I almost certainly will make a minor adjustment to ink flow later on um, and, and just to, to smooth it out a tiny bit more. I also noticed a little bit that there's a little bit of weirdness if I get too vertical with the pen. Now, I tend, generally tend to hold my pen at a nice 45 degree angle when I write. Sometimes a little bit higher, but most of the time it's a 45 degree angle. Um, if I get above 60 degrees, it tends it starts to get a little scratchy. So I think that that very top part of the um, the tip of the nib isn't quite as smooth as I want. That's such a minor fix. It's something that I probably could have worked with. You know, Brian actually had me do a tiny bit of smoothing with the nib there at the DC show. Um, if I had spent a little bit more time with it there, it probably would have taken care of itself. So 
that is certainly not enough for me not to recommend this nib. Uh, I just, I found that on every Edison nib I use, they tend to have just a touch more feedback than a comparable nib, uh, comparable Yovo nib from, say, Goulet, where I think they tend to have their nibs polished just a touch more. So it's really a, a taste thing. It is always easier to polish out a little bit of feedback than to add it back in after the fact. So if you're one of those people who likes feedback, you're all set. And if not, polishing out a nib is super simple. I've got a video on it. Brian's got a video on it. Uh, it it's really quite easy to do. Um, it's a steel nib, so it's quite rigid. And, uh, you know, so don't, don't bother trying to get any flex out of it. That's not really the point uh, of this nib. Reverse writing is spectacular, um, very smooth. So if you need to reverse write, at least this, this iteration of this nib has been one of the best reverse writers I've seen in a long time. And now I, I never ever have call for this, but I know a lot of people do. A lot of times they will do, um, you know, mathematic formulas or take notes and margins or that sort of thing. Um, because my writing's a little bit bigger and a little bit chunkier, um, and loopy reverse writing doesn't happen a lot for me. So, um, aside from that, because this is um, a a pump filler as opposed to a cartridge converter, I haven't seen any ink starvation at all on this pen. And I wrote a six-page review by hand with this nonstop. It took you know a little bit over an hour and a half, and never once did this choke. Did it skip? Did it hard start? Uh, it really is quite a quite a good nib. Um, and, and that has been fairly consistent with every Edison pen that I have tried. Um, as I mentioned, it's just a touch feedback year than feedback year. I like making up words than I normally like, but for the most part, I think this is really quite a lovely nib. All right. Well, I think that will do it for my review of the Edison Menlo. Uh, this pen does retail at a, a little bit hefty of a price. It's $350. Uh, with a steel nib, you can get a gold nib for four hundred uh, and fifty. You can get it with a gold nib for four hundred and fifty dollars. Um, additional costs apply depending on if you have it custom made or if you buy one of their pre-made ones, or if you have you know special things done to it, that sort of thing. Um, I hear this complaint in the community a lot that Edison pens are too expensive for what they are. I, I get where a lot of the complaint is coming from. I don't personally agree with it. I find that Edison pens are some of the best made pens on the market today. They're not mass manufactured. It's a couple of people in a garage in Ohio. It's not, or, you know, in a small workshop in Ohio. It's not a huge factory. Uh, so this, I find this very much in keeping with the pens that I have ordered from custom pen makers like Scriptorium Pens or Sean Newton or, you know, Carolina Pen Company, or any of those custom manufacturers. Price-wise, I find this very much in the same range. Now, it is true, Edison pens do generally, uh, they're made on a, a computer-controlled a CNC lathe as opposed to by hand, um, but there's a ton of hand polishing and hand finishing. Um, the threads on this thing are butter smooth, everywhere. They're super tight. That has been the case on every Edison pen. I have never come across an Edison pen with bad threads um, or, or bad polishing or anything less than a perfect finish. Um, so is $350 expensive for a steel nibbed pen when you can get a $150 pen from Lamy or Pilot or Pelican, uh, not Pelican, uh, Pilot or, or Platinum for for 150 bucks, yes, but you're not getting a pen, a handmade, hand-finished pen with this level of attention to detail. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a toss-up. Is it, is it expensive? Absolutely. Is it worth it? In my mind, absolutely. So, there we go. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about the Menlo or any other pens, please go ahead and leave them here on YouTube or if you're watching on penhabit.com, first of all, thank you. Uh, you can leave them in the, the comments section on penhabit.com. Also, if you want to see a video of the pump filling system that uh, 
the Edison Pen Company put together. I have embedded it in the blog post at penhabit.com so you can see how it works, how it's assembled, how to clean it out. Uh, Brian does a really good job with that. I didn't want to take the time in this video to do that. So, uh, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.